So in the previous class, we started discussing about various uh, PWM schemes for multi-level inverters. So we started with uh, phase shifted PWM and followed by level shifted PWM, right? And we compared both methods. And after that, uh, we discussed this uh, selective hallmark elimination or the trapezoidal modulation techniques, uh, technique for uh, especially cascadage bridge inverters. So finding out the uh, right instance, so when to switch on the particular H bridge so that the lower order harmonics can be minimized or in other words, the lower order harmonics can be completely eliminated. Right. So next we have another method, so which is known as hybrid PWM, which is known as hybrid PWM. So this is especially used for asymmetrical cascade H bridge inverters. So this is used for asymmetrical cascade H bridge inverters. So in one of the class, we, when we discussed the cascade edge bridge inverters, we discussed that asymmetrical ratio of DC sources will improve the, uh, uh, will increase the number of levels, right? So with that, so how to do this, uh, how to uh, implement the uh, PWM techniques for asymmetrical, so that we'll see now, right? So here, if you observe that, so this is the one, so let us assume that we have some asymmetrical uh, nine level inverter topology, uh, for instance. So you have VDC here, and the other side we have three VDC. Right. So how to implement the PWM scheme? So for these things, right? So here, usually the highest one, so which are having the highest voltage, so that will usually operate in square wave operation or the quasi square wave operation right so this is the highest voltage this is 3 vdc so this is how it is controlled so this is operating in a quasi square wave right so here this this one right so this one so this is operating in so pwm mode or whatever this balance right so for example our ultimate aim so how exact it will be controlled means, so you have voltage here, so this point to this point voltage, it is supposed to produce some modulation index, for example, it's supposed to produce, so this is the voltage that must be produced, right? So between this point and this point, so this must be the voltage. In other words, this will be the modulating signal, so for this particular inverter phase leg. So this is portion of this one must be supplied by this lower uh, or this low rating H bridge, and so most of this will be supplied by this high rate or high rating H bridge. So how exactly this is divided? Right. So first one. So this one will operate in either PWM uh, or either in quasi square wave operation or something like this. It will be it will produce so this kind of a quasi square wave. All right. Okay. So whatever, right. So whatever the remaining is there, so that must be produced by this upper bridge or the low rating bridge. Right. So here, so this is usually operate in PW mode. So this is usually operate in PW mode. Right. So when it is operating in PW mode, it require a modulating signal. So that modulating signal is obtained by subtracting the, this is the original modulating signal, and this is the output of this bridge. If you subtract these two, right, if you subtract these two, so that will be the modulating signal for, so this H bridge, right? So in other words, combinedly, right, so that will be the modulating signal for this one. So it will be something like this. If you subtract these two, so it will be something like this, okay? Right, so this will be the modulating signal for the first H bridge or the low rating H bridge, right? So that means theoretically, so if you add the voltage between the first bridge and the second bridge, you're supposed to get this voltage. Right. So how exactly it is done? So let us assume that this is the expected output. 
the first one is the expected phase voltage all right so next the highest voltage right the highest voltage one is operated in pw mode So this is the highest one, for example. So this is operating in PW mode. So it is operating in quasi square wave mode, right? So now we are generating the modulating signal for the low voltage H bridge, right? If you subtract these two, this is the first one. And if you subtract this one, so this is one minus two. So you'll get this kind of waveform. And now this waveform is the modulating signal for the rest of the bridges this will be the modulating signal for the first bridge right so again this first bridge is operating in level shifted for example this is operating either level shifted or it may be operated in phase shifted right if it is operating in level shifted so based on this interaction of this one so you will get an output of this nature right so now we have combined these two so this is the first bridge or the high voltage bridge output and this is the low voltage bridge output so if you combine these two right so this is the first one and this is the second one so you got a output so this is the first one and this is the second one output and this is one plus two so this is the output of the overall inverter so which is having a value or which is having a fundamental so which is this one So originally we have this cycle, right? So this is the expected one. So based on that, so we generated the firing signal for the other bridges. Understood? So this idea is simple. So this idea is simple. So first we have this expected one, this expected one. So highest bridge is usually operated in PWM mode, or no, sorry, fundamental frequency mode. Right, so this is the first or the highest voltage output voltage. So that is operating square wave or quasi square wave. Right, so now you subtract these two. So this is one and two, subtract these two. So that will be the modulating signal for the remaining bridges. So that will act as a modulating signal for the remaining bridges. So here, so instead of actual sine wave, so this modulating signal, this acts as a modulating signal. Right. So now we implemented the level shifted. For example, we have one, two, three, four switches are there, right? So one and two will control by this uh, blue color one. And this four and three is controlled by this pink color carrier signals. So this one and two is controlled by this blue color carrier. And this three and uh, four and three are controlled by this pink color carrier because you have U shape, right? Okay. So now this is generates this kind of output so which is lower one if you observe that the lower one is at 10 volts to 10 volts which is varying from plus one to 10 volts so whereas the whereas the highest voltage side it is varying from 20 to 20 and the overall one is varying from plus 30 to minus 30. Right. so if you combine the output which is 20 to minus 20 and this is plus 10 to minus 10 and the combined one which is varying from plus 30 to minus 30. If you add these two, so you'll get a this kind of output. Understood. So this is known as hybrid PWM technique, so which is especially used for uh, asymmetrical multi-level inverters so this is for one is to two ratio of inverters why it is one is to two ratio so this one is producing 10 volts and this is producing 20 volts and this is producing 30 volts peak value right so therefore you are getting a five levels so that is one two three four no seven level output so this is with two right you get seven level which is varying from plus uh, 30 to minus 30 so you are getting seven levels 
right so ranging from plus 30 to minus 30 so you can see here right so this is one level and there one another and there like seven levels so one of the drawback with this method is one of the drawback with this method is so you can see that these are the unwanted unwanted switching so these are the unwanted switching so why this unwanted switching is appeared because if you notice that so this one especially so these are creating some narrow switchings so these are creating some narrow switchings right so here it is changing from plus 10 to minus 10 and it is reducing sharply so therefore we may expect that so there are some intersecting points so within that right so there is an intersecting point within that especially if you observe this region especially this region so it is causing some intermediate switching right so this is causing some intermediate switching or some uh, small uh, duration of switchings right or it is usually known as glitches it is usually known as glitches so you can see here one here so another here so another here so this is especially happen so when it is changing from right so when it's changing from here to here so here to here so here to here so there is a sudden increase in voltage right so there is sudden voltage rise that means dv by dt is high so therefore we can expect that so some of the intermediate pulse you can see here you can zoom it and you can see here so there will be some narrow switching here so that narrow switching so it's appeared as a glitches or voltage glitches here so in fact there is no much harm to the inverter so with these glitches right so there is no much harm to the inverter with these glitches right so this is how the hybrid pwm scheme is implemented right so here you may be aware that most of the cases we deal with per unit values so we deal with per unit values okay. so why because so we need to subtract the output voltage from this expected output voltage right so therefore we have to make sure that so all are in per unit so we have to make sure that so all these voltages are in per unit so that the subtraction will be easy So let us assume that we have one uh, 20 volts bridge is there. So another 10 volts bridge is there. Another 10 volts bridge is there. Right. So this is the case. You have one 20 volts bridge is there. So 10 volts and another 10 volts bridge is there. Right. So this 20 volts is operated as it is. And this 10, 10 volts, you have two bridges. So this is the moderating signal for these two bridges. So this will be the moderating signal for these two bridges, right? So now you have, so it will be something like this. You require four number of carriers or, right? So this is carrier one, two, so this is three, and this is four. So you have four carriers are required. And these four carriers, sir, you have four H bridges, these are two H bridges, sir, right? So you have, so four switches here, and there are four switches are here. And this eight switches is controlled by so these carrier signals. Eight switches is controlled by these two or uh, these four carrier signals. Understood. So just in an extension, you have one more carrier here, one more carrier here. So this top two will control the first bridge of the low voltage side, and these two will control the, the bottom two will control the another two bridges or another bridge in the low voltage side. That's all. Right. So let us assume that if there is another scenario. You have 30 volts is there, so 20 volts is there, and 10 volts is there. So as it is 30 voltage will operate like this right 30 voltage will operate like this 
and if you require this 20 volts will also operate in square wave right or the fundamental frequency and the modulating signal for this 20 wave or 20 voltage will be the this one so this will be the modulating signal right for this one but the difference is it is operating at a fundamental frequency and therefore so it is producing a waveform of this nature so this kind of output voltage it is usually produced right so now you left with 10 volts right so you left with 10 volts so 10 volts it must be operating pw mode so therefore so whatever the remaining is there right so remaining you, you subtracted from the output of this is the original one right so you subtract the first bridge output so you left with something right and from this you subtract the second bridge output and you left with something so that will be the modulating signal for the third bridge okay that will be the modulating signal for the third bridge so it will be like this right. so let us assume that you have n cells are there see so n cells are there the first one so this is the expected one or expected modulating signal right or expected output voltage so first we will this is cell n is operating in multi-level stepper modulation so that means it is maybe operated in square wave operation so this will be the output and this output is subtracted from the original one so this output is subtracted from the original one and this this one right and this one acts as a modulating signal for the n minus one cell right so this one is operate at modulating signal for the n minus one so this is the output of n minus one cell output of n minus one cell and it is subtracted from this one okay. and it is subtracted from this n minus one output so that gives you the modulating signal for the first one this process is repeated see so here original one right subtract output of one output of bridge one right so that will be the modulating signal for the second bridge so now subtract the first and second one so that will be the modulating signal for the third bridge now you subtract two and three so that will be the modulating signal for the fourth bridge and so on so this is how exactly so that it will be operated right so this is about asymmetrical operation or the asymmetrical control of uh, cascade h bridge inverters so you have any questions you have any questions So if you have no questions, uh, we'll move to the next topic.